Welcome! Over the next couple videos, we are going to introduce state in React. Now, state is any data that might change in our application. And the way it works in React is that components manage their own individual state and then can pass that data down as props. All of this will make more sense as we go along. So let's just get kicking here. And I'm going to come down, I'm going to change directories into my eight state folder, come down into starter, and there we go. Okay, so this is a create React app, which means that to kick it off for the first time, I have to run npm install. So go ahead and run that command and we'll just talk about what we have here and get going with stuff as that is running in the background. Okay, so we have our source files just like before. We have an index file that pulls in practice one and then all of these other practice exercises, we can comment them out. So let's come into the first one and look at what we have here. Now, the first thing we see is that rather than having a functional component like we've had in the past, so if I come back into my prop section and look at one of these, notice that we have a function, right? It is written with the arrow syntax, but it is a function. Now, when we get into state, especially when we're just starting off, we're going to switch to using classes. And the reason for this is that React, one of the things we haven't looked at in the React library yet, but comes with it, is a component. So React gives us a default component with a whole bunch of methods and abilities attached onto it. For example, using state, updating state, and doing lifecycle hooks, which we will look at. So the most straightforward way for us to get benefits from all the React components, which we haven't been getting when we write our own functions, we manually pass in props, and other than that, it's a normal JavaScript function. So if we want to get access to state and everything that it has built into that, we could just extend the React component. Sometimes you'll also see it written like this where they get component out on its own. So it just is extend component. That works as well. But uh, we're going to show the long way here uh, just because we're getting started with it all. Okay, so how do we add state to an object? Well, this is actually pretty easy. We simply create a new property called state and we can create state in our application. Uh, it says create a username or in our component, mind you. It says username with a property of some username. So I'm just going to add this real quick. And some username. Cool. Okay. So now anywhere in this component, we could have access to state. Now, why is this helpful? Why don't we just set our own variables and do the same thing with something like uh, let username equal to username and update it that way. Well, there are a lot of benefits more than we'll get into at this moment for using state application. But one of the most important to know is that when we update our state and then pass it around, React will do a lot of keeping track of stuff. And in general, it's a good idea with large applications, not just to have a bunch of variables, but have an actual state object that is your source of truth for all your data. So you always know it's going to go there. So to use state, since this is just a normal JavaScript class, so there's nothing unique about this particularly, we could just call, we got to switch to JavaScript, right? So we do curly braces this which refers to this component which is extending this component so this dot state which is this this and then the specific thing we want username this is all vanilla javascript mind you okay this is nothing react about this so if we run this and i get my stuff up and running here we can see that we have some username okay so that is our data now, I want to point out that we're able to do this because of class fields in JavaScript, but this is not fully supported yet in all cases, depending on when you watch this. So you might see this in some other React code. So let me just show you. They would use a constructor function, which is part of classes in JavaScript, pass props into that, and then call super with props. And what that allows you to do is use this inside of here. So without running this constructor function, normally that would not work. And then we could do this dot state and set up our username and some username. OK, so even in some of the React docs, you will see this. However, class fields, even though it's not fully rolled out, it is supported by create React app. So I think if we were to just look at both of these for a second, this one is much simpler than this, right? I think so. So. I am going to recommend not using this and just know that if you're in create react app, you're fine. And if you have Babel and class field supported, then you're good to go, which we do in this instance. So that is how we would set up state. Now what we have to learn about next is how do we go about updating state? Because there is a special function called set state that we call 
And we never ever want to just call this.state.username and override it directly. So we'll look at that in the next one. But just to review real quick, the important thing here is that we are extending the React component, which gives us access to a whole bunch of tools, including the ability to update and manage state in a component. And then to create state, we're just writing plain vanilla JavaScript with our whatever it is that we want. And then this.state, which means practice state and then whatever property of state in order to display it. So this is all plain vanilla JavaScript. We haven't even looked at anything that's specific to React yet, but we're about to when we get into set state and how to do that in the next video.